Hey guys, we're now going to talk about symmetric motion problems where you don't have the initial velocity. Let's check it out. So usually in symmetric motion problems or projectile motion problems in general, you're given the initial velocity and the initial angle, and then you're asked to find the range, how long it's in the air for, and all that kind of stuff. But what happens if you don't have these? So in specifically for symmetric launch, remember symmetric is where you start um, and you come back to the same height. Um, when you're missing either VA or theta A or both, we're going to solve this uh, using a combination of two to three equations. Now, the way we're going to solve this is a little bit different from the problems where I'm giving you VA and, and, and theta A. So we're going to use a different strategy. Remember our vector equations, right? So two of them have to do with decomposition, how to get VAX, VAY. Um, but two of them have to do with how to put a vector back together. The magnitude of any vector is the Pythagorean of its components. And the angle of any vector is the arctangent of its components like this. So the idea is, if I'm looking for VA and theta A, I'm actually going to find VAX and VAY and then use the components to find the vector and the angle. So that's going to be our strategy. Find VAX and VAY. Remember VAX is simply VX because VX never changes. Okay. Now to do this, I'm going to derive three new equations for you. Not new, but simplified versions of our motion equations that I think are going to be very helpful. Okay. So if you write Y equations in the BC interval, so this is A, this is B, and this is C. So BC is this. If you write equations in the BC interval, you're going to get very simple versions of those equations because um, the initial velocity is zero. Okay, and what you're going to have is simple combinations of all of your three equations, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, so you're going to have that in such a way that if you know any of the three y variables, you're going to be able to find the other two using these three very simple equations. Okay. Again, if I go from B to C, the initial velocity here, VBY, is zero. And that's why we're going to use BC and not AB or AC or whatever. Um, and if you notice your three moment, uh, motion equations, they all have V initial, right? And this is my V initial because I'm going from B to C. So V final equals V initial plus AT becomes just V equals AT. Um, v final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta X becomes just this. And delta x equals v initial t, that cancels, plus half of a t squared. So these equations simplify a lot. Now, to avoid problems with signs and directions and all that kind of stuff, I'm going to try to simplify this even further. So if you're going from b to c, just for the sake of deriving these equations, I'm going to say that going down is positive. So all these numbers will be positive. Okay. So what I have is... Um, and I'm also going to call, instead of delta y, just one more thing. Instead of delta y, I'm going to call this h and just say, you know what, let's just say h is the height. Whether it's positive or negative, we're just going to use it as a positive number because the height's positive. So we don't have to worry about signs. What that's going to do is that all these numbers, all these variables, all these values in these equations will be positive. So let's work this out. This is the velocity going down which is gravity going down is positive, gravity is going down, so this is positive. And this is the time but it's only the time to go down, okay? So the second equation is the velocity going down squared equals two gravity again as a positive, and instead of delta x is delta y, delta y going down is positive in this case, but I'm just gonna call this h, okay? And three is delta y, or delta x becomes delta y, but I'm just gonna call it h, equals half of g t squared, and this is the time to go down. All right. So here's my point um, that the, these equations will be simpler, but there's a few other things here that, for example, t up equals t down. So I'm really solving for either one of the two times, but it is not the total time. The total time is 2t up or 2t down. And another thing is that the velocity going up has the same magnitude as the velocity going down. Okay, so this equation could very well have been written as V up or V down, um, T up or T down. Okay, so I'm actually going to write the sort of final version of these equations. I want to write just Vy equals G 
T. Now I'm going to put a T up here just to, so we're sure that's um, so we know that that's not the total time. Um, v Y whether it's up and down doesn't matter. A or C equals two G H. And the last one is going to be H equals half of G T up squared. Again, it doesn't matter that I'm using time up or time down. Um, they are the same. Okay, and remember that the time, the total time is a combination, is the addition of both, so it's just twice the time up or twice the time down. So this is a simplified set of three equations that I'm going to be able to use. And with these, um, with these, as long as I have any y variable, I'm going to be able to find the other two. If you look here, I have v and t. This has v and h, and this has h and t. So I have every possible combination. Let's do an example that I want you guys to do a problem. Okay, and remember the strategy is going to be to find VAX and VAY and then use those to find VA and theta A. So here an object is launched from, uh, from the ground at an angle like this. It reaches its maximum height and then returns to the ground. Because it returns to the ground, this is a symmetric launch, which is the type of problem we're looking at. I'm going to call this A, B, and C. And this is my VA, this is my theta a which is what we're looking for but again the strategy is we're actually going to look for v a x and v a y first so I'm gonna go for v a x first because the x axis is simpler so there's only one equation delta x equals v x t um, so v x is simply delta x over t I have delta x, right? This problem says that you go a horizontal distance of 240. And by the way, it also says that the height is 45. So I'm just going to call this h equals 45. OK, so I have 240 divided by time. The time I don't have. But I do want to point out, since, um, since I'm using 240, which is the entire um, width of the motion, it's the entire horizontal displacement of the motion, um, I have to use t total. And these equations here, which we're going to use in a second, are only going to give me half of that time. So remember that t total is twice the time to go up. Alright, so now I'm stuck. I'm stuck in the y-axis. I can't do anything else. I'm sorry, I'm stuck in the x-axis. I can't do anything else. So I'm going to go to the y-axis looking for time. Okay, and remember, this is one of the big points here. If I know any of these three variables, I can find the other two. And here I know my h. So from h, I'm going to be able to find the time to go up or the time to go down. It's the same thing. And from that, I'm going to be able to find the time total. Okay, which is what I want for this. So I can use the third equation here, very, very straightforward. h equals half gt squared. Again, in these equations, all these numbers are positive because of the way that I simplified um, them in the derivation process. Um, and I can just find t. t is the square root of 2h over g. And if you plug all these numbers in here, you get 3.03 .03 seconds. But that's only my time to go up or the time to go down. The total time is 6.06 .06 seconds okay so to find my velocity let's move this over here to find my velocity it's 240 divided by 6.06 .06. and if you plug in these numbers carefully you get 39.6 meters per second okay so I found VX now I just have to find VY VY obviously sits in the Y axis um, so I'm going to use one of these three simplified equations and to find V I can use either the first or the second. I'm just going to use um, the first one here. So VY equals G time up. So G is 9.8. The time up is 3.03 .03, and VY therefore is... 29.7 okay now that I have these two velocities um, I just have to piece it together and find a vector okay so VA is the square root of VAX 
VAY out of the Pythagorean between the two. And these velocities are 39.6 squared. VX doesn't change. Um, VY here is my velocity going up, which is the same as the velocity going down. Um, so I can use that. And you plug this all in, and you have 49.5 meters. And then the last thing I have to do is find the angle, theta A. It's just the arc tangent of y over x. So the arc tangent of y over x. And I get, it rounds up to 37 degrees. Okay? So just to wrap up real quick, um, strategy, find Vx, find Vy when we're looking for Va and theta A. And I can use this simplified set of equations that allows me to very easily navigate between the three um, Y variables that I'm going to have. All right? So that's it for this one.